Hello there. In series of engineering mechanics video lectures, we are trying to cover the parallel forces in a plane. We have discussed about the different topics on this one and we determine the, the resultant components of the different parallel forces. There are going to be different types of the parallel forces here. The like equal the parallel forces and then we derive the, the resultant force which direction it is going to be acting. Unlike equal forces, unlike unequal parallel forces we have seen and we have derived the resultant component. At the same time, when a particle is going to be subjected to the a force and that force we are converted into the another force and a couple we have seen. So on this basis, we are trying to solve a few problems on that one. And here, I am going to be presenting the one problem on this one. The two men, so here he has taken the two men, support a weightless wooden beam AB. So here, the weightless wooden beam is going to the AB with a weight of 1000 newtons hanging from the beam as shown in the figure. Find the, the load shared by the each man we need to discuss here. So then what will happen here, the, as shown in the figure, this is the figure he has given and also it is going to be making with the horizontal, so that is that is equal to 60 degrees it is going to be making. So that means the center line of this beam I am going to be considering here, that is going to be the 60 degrees. And here is the weight is going to be 1000 newtons load is going to be acting. Then what is the load shared at the end A of the first man and the second man is going to be at the B, so what is the load shared here? So, we need to find out the, uh, the reaction forces here at A as well as the B. That means in terms of them, how much amount of the load shared by man A and the man B, right? So then how, what is the first step we need to do? The first we need to draw the uh, free body diagram. So what is the free body diagram for this one? We are going to be removing what are the supports we do have. In this case, what are the supports we do have? The man is going to be carrying the load on his shoulder, suppose. So then that's going to be your the reaction force is going to be generating from your body to that B. So that's A and the B. So that what I'm going to do. So I'm going to draw the free body diagram here. So that's going to be free body diagram for the beam AB. So the same positions I'm going to be taking here. This is going to be the axis of the beam. And then I'm going to be taking the beam over here. More or less, I'm going to be maintaining the same. So then this end is going to be the A and this end is going to be the B. At the same time, at a distance of 60 centimeters and from the 40 centimeters from the B, so there is a load is acting 1000 newtons. So that point I am going to be taking here. So that is going to be acting in the downward direction, that is the 1000 newtons. At the same time, when I am going to be removing the humans, that means they are carrying the load. So then what will happen, there is going to be a reaction force is going to be generating over here. That's I am going to say RA. This is generated from the humans. And here it is going to be the RB. And it is going to be making with the horizontal is going to be the 60 degrees. So the first we have taken the AB and then load is going to be acting 1000 newtons. That is at a distance of here that's going to be 0 0.6 meters and this is going to be 0 0.4 meters load distance it is acting the 1000 newtons so then in this case we have the the reaction forces that is generated by the humans and the 1000 newtons load is going to be acting so then here see whether the forces are in the parallel direction or maybe the they are going to be intersecting there we can see so for this part i'm going to be extending the the line of action I'm going to be cross-checking whether these are going to be the parallel forces or the concurrent forces like that. So then in this case, can you see the distance between the RA and the load, the load and RB, they are maintaining the throughout its process. That means the constant distance it is maintaining when we are extending a, a line. So that means the line of action. Then we can say these are the parallel forces. At the same time, they are acting in a plane. So then what are the formulas we are going to be using to solve this one? So in this case, what will happen, we, we are going to be considering the equilibrium condition for this parallel forces. Once we are going to be considering the equilibrium positions, we are going to be getting the formulas like the sigma f of x equal to 0, sigma f of y is equal to 0, and sigma m are the moments about a point, about a point is equal to 0. On this basis, we are going to be solving the unknown parameters that is going to be RA as well as the RB. 
So the first I have seen that R A and R B acting vertically, sigma f of y is equal to zero. So then what are the forces we do have? That's going to be R A and R B are acting vertically upward direction. That's going to be R A plus R B. And then this force is going to be acting in the vertically downward direction. That's going to be tau z. Then in this case, the single equation, the two unknowns parameters are there. Then it is very difficult to solve it. Then what I'm going to do? I'm going to be taking the moments about a point. Either if I'm going to take it a or the b, also we can take it because we do have the the distance of this part. So then I'm going to taking the the moments. Before taking the moments, as we know that the moments is nothing but the force into perpendicular distance, right? So then what happened? What is the distance perpendicular distance? Suppose I'm going to be taking the the moments at a is equal to zero. So then what will, what are the forces we do have here? So one is the thousand newtons, one is the R B. What is the perpendicular distance in this case? And what is the perpendicular distance? We do have this is going to be zero point six meters in the inclined position. It is making a sixty degrees. So then how would you calculate the adjacent here? So that I am going to be calculating here by using the uh, trigonometric equations. So when I am going to be taking the moments at A, so then what will happen? This is the force acting in the clockwise direction. This is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. So the distance I am going to be taking here is the thousand is going to be clockwise direction. That's going to be thousand into what is the perpendicular distance in this case? I am going to say A B and this point I am going to be considered as a, a C. So then I am going to be taking the horizontal component of this AC. AC horizontal component it is making with the 60 degrees and 0.6. That's going to be 0.6 into cos 60. I am going to be considered. So in this case. That is going to be your horizontal distance, which is perpendicular to the line of action of the forces, and this R B is going to be acting opposite direction. That is the anti-clockwise direction. That is equal to R B into what is the distance we do have from here? So this is going to be the the inclined position that is going to be existed in one meter, and it is making sixty degrees. So one into cos sixty degrees I have taken. So then automatically this equation it was generated. So then R B is equal to what is the formula? The finally R B is equal to thousand into point six into cos sixty degrees divided by cos sixty. So then from this one I got it around six hundred newtons. I got it. So that is the R B I have. So once the R B is there, that I am going to be substituting at R B. So then R A value I can calculate. So if I am going to be substituting six hundred in this one, so what is the value? So once, if I am going to be substituting R A plus 600, that is the R B that we got it, that is equal to 1000. So then finally R A is equal to 400 meters. So this way we are going to be calculating the uh, the reaction forces at A as well as the B that humans are going to be carrying that load.